Hello everyone, this is Life Questions and I'm Bill Harris, your host. If you are like most folks these days, you are a bit perplexed about happenings in today's world. And we here at TV44 can tell by all the questions that we have been receiving from you, our viewers. And we want to thank you for sending them. We quickly turn those questions over to local ministers who have agreed to do some Bible research for answers. And they are here with their findings. And I'd like for you to meet them at this time. This should be an interesting program. We're joined by Pastor Tim Benjamin of Wayne Street United Methodist Church, followed by Pastor Parker Miley, of Walnut Grove United Methodist Church. Then we have Pastor Rick Shear of Living Hope Assembly of God. And rounding up our panel, Pastor Bev Hurlbert of Grace Church. And by the way, all of our panelists hail from the city, the community of St. Mary's. Yes, yes, Feel yes, like yes, we've yes. been invaded by St. Mary's yes. today, huh? <laughs> well, that's a happy invasion. We're happy to have you with us today. And uh, going right into the questions here, I, 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 we've got some very good questions that we came that came into us. Let's start with this question that asks, my daughter arrived at her Christian college and on the first day, she was invited to an alcoholic frat party. She didn't drink, but she was ostracized because of it and was encouraged to get a fake ID and found out the captain uh, on her sports team is gay. She called me in tears because this is not what she was expecting. The school is known for being conservative. I want to encourage her to stand strong in her faith. Can you give me suggestions on how to do that? Yeah, that how is she going to go? That first step in freshman year is always tough because uh, you're you're coming out of your very sheltered high school experience and you're stepping into the greater world and 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 seeing and experiencing things you never was probably exposed to that much before. Mm -hmm. And uh, I, I guess the advice that I would give uh, to this person speaking to their their I think it was their daughter, mm -hmm. is uh, all the things that you thought were true before you got here are still true now that you have arrived. You know, all the stuff that you learned growing up, all those Bible stories, all those experiences that you had, all that stuff is still true and still accurate. A new environment doesn't change any of those things. And uh, to tell her to hang on to that stuff, you know, doesn't mean you have to be judgmental against any of the things you don't agree with and, and, and don't participate in. And my, I mean, that goes mm -hmm. beyond saying, but... But uh, to be able to be a part of what's going on there and stand firm in what was true before because your arriving at college didn't change any of the eternal truth you were a part of prior to, to your arrival. Very good. Yeah. Very well thought out, I would say. I would say enjoy the mission field. Yeah. I, get a lot of, I get a lot of enjoyment. I think a lot of Christians, when we eventually get to a point where we can share our faith and when we can be that example, and I think um, you know, fighting that good fight of faith is certainly never easy. But if we can stay strong and be that example, you know that you may actually have a deeper effect on someone or one of your, whether it be a person on your team or in your classes that is, you know, kind of falling into temptation, set that example of what it is to, to walk with life with God and, and be in that life of service and holiness and aiming to, to follow his will. And I think I, I find I'm myself, I find enjoyment in being able to know that I might be out there Every, no matter where I am, I can still shine a light of Christ mm -hmm. in every situation. I think that kind of can be a motivating factor in why we keep doing what we do. One follow-up question before we move to the two of you. Being at 19 years of age, just having your first pastorate assigned to you just two months ago, mm -hmm. do you think at your youthful age that you would have somewhat of an upper hand because of your youthfulness in, in, in trying to get to many of the young people who need to be persuaded to come back to the fold, as it were? My, uh, I, I, so I started college recently, and everyone in my class, I would actually say, now that I have the title of pastor, they're more scared of me <laughs> than, than, they are, um, than they are willing to approach. But no, I definitely, because I can relate, I, they still you know, invite me to all the parties and everything, and I go, I just, you know, I'm making sure I'm not falling into some of those temptations and things. And mm -hmm. I eventually know where there's a level where I, my faith has to come over all the other craziness that can go on in a college atmosphere. But yeah, being younger, it has its benefits, but it's certainly kind of with that title and people often get scared a little bit. Yeah. Well, let's continue on then. Pastor <laughs> Bev, what would you say in the way of suggestions to, to help this lady that um, has a child? I actually have six daughters, so um, oh. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> this, this question has come up. Um, my One of my daughters, I thought, would go, would search until she found the perfect Christian school. 
but she told me that she decided not to go to a Christian college because she felt that this is the world that she would be living in and she needed to adjust, you know, coming from St. Mary's, fairly small town, she wanted to see the world for what it is mm -hmm. and be able to learn to adjust in it. And so it is having those core values before you go in, yes. having the conversation, having an out. So when they ask you if you want to go to a party and, you know, to find out what's going on at the party and, and, and be able to empower your daughter to say, no, thanks, that's just not for me or, you know, go and not partake. Mm -hmm. And so, and to find people with the same, same philosophy she has, or the same convictions that mm -hmm. she has. Mm -hmm. And so she doesn't feel alone because yeah. I think that's mm -hmm. when you start giving into temptation is when you feel alone. Yeah. And yeah. so that she has other people, because that's, that's one example of what goes on in college, but that's not everything that goes right. on. There's right. a million, many other opportunities yeah. for them to. Yeah. And, and one of the things that they all need to remember <clears throat> is anything, any relationship or any circumstance that you have to compromise to keep is not worth having mm -hmm. yeah. and that that mm -hmm. that's i think where your loneliness thing i think that's where that comes from that's good right. counsel good counsel yeah. Pastor and, Shear? and this and this particular thing is probably the hardest to think about but reminding the daughter why she's actually there you know it's not about the it's not about the parties it's not about those things it's about getting an education and bettering herself um, for the future but uh, again having the conversations and getting that that set ahead of time and not and not uh, being deceived ahead of time you know being recognizing that there is no perfect college just like there's no perfect yeah. person true. Mm -hmm. yes. true very true very good and, and a related question that came in from yet another viewer i'm a parent of four children they're wonderful kids who willingly go to church and say they love jesus but i'm worried about the future uh, i know so many families whose kids left the church as young adults I keep hearing that faith must be made their own. How does that happen and what can I do to help it happen? Any thoughts on that? Um, I, you have to be a positive influence. Um, church itself can sometimes hold its own challenges. <laughs> and so when you're part of a church, I mean, if you, if you are, as a parent, grumbling about the church and grumbling about the people and, and having a hard time getting along with others there, that rubs off to the children more than you realize. Mm. And so while it's, it's not completely about the church, if you want them to continue to be a part of it, I think you really need to put that in a positive perspective. And you need to talk about that personal relationship with Jesus Christ. It's not about do this and don't do that. It is your personal walk with Jesus Christ. Mm -hmm. okay. and, I, and I think that, that setting an example and modeling, I mean, you can't overstate the importance of that. If, mm -hmm. kid, if, if your children don't see you doing it, why would they do it? I mean, what, what motivation would they even have? And then to take that the second step, if you're you know, grumbling and, and not happy and that kind of stuff and um, not, not participating, not engaged, your children won't be either. So, so setting the mm -hmm. setting, not only desiring that and praying for that for them, but modeling that for them, that cannot be overstated. How important modeling that is. and mentoring it. Yes, you know because again, so many times we don't include them in the things that we're doing at church, and that makes a difference because once they start feeling connected and and connected with that relationship, mm -hmm. and 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 then of course you know same as the last question. Uh, we didn't really say it, but the same as last question, be praying for the kids, mm -hmm. you know, be praying for the daughter that's in the mm -hmm. college and, mm -hmm. and be, you know, too many times we use prayer as the last resort yeah. rather than the, the main mm -hmm. source. Mm -hmm. And it, it's obvious too, this parent is concerned about making sure that, that this child makes it her own faith. You know, yep. how sometimes yep. we, th there's the mistake. Which is a great of, thing yes. for her parent to want. Yeah, yeah. yeah. because yeah. many times the kid has the assumption of the parents religion yep. and they've not made it their own yep. yet. Right. And, right. And, and if a parent tries to force that upon them, it does actually more harm than any good Ooh. could come out of yeah. it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So if you, you know, yeah. trying to force your kids to take on this faith, it normally makes them just run farther and farther away from yeah. it yeah. Yeah. in many situations. And I have five kids and that, that's something that I was very cautious about. Mm -hmm. And uh, mm -hmm. four of my five are Christians now and I'm grateful for that, but I'm still concerned about that one sure. fifth one down right. there in Atlanta. God, deal with his heart. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Yes. And I bet there's not a day goes by that you don't pray yes. for him or Yes, yes, all the time, yeah. every single day, yeah. every single yeah. day. Yeah, yeah that, that's the truth. Yeah. I mean, and, and we're living in a, in a day and in an age where the other influences are so dominant in, mm -hmm. dominant in society. Yeah. 
that coupled with the peer pressure yeah. itself, mm -hmm. uh, it's it's a it's a definite challenge in terms of raising children, mm -hmm. let alone trying to get them all the way to a Christian college, mm -hmm. and that's a that's a real milestone when you've got that far with them. And it's not like yes. it was when when we were young, you know, technology and social media and all these things have made it a twenty four seven challenge. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. You know, years ago when we went to school, if things were going on at school. Mm -hmm. At the school bell, it ended. Yeah. You know, you had you had that release, you had that break, you had that respite until the next day. But now it's just twenty four seven. Yeah, it's interesting to and, think about, and, and a lot of a lot of guys in this guy's here's generation yeah. probably don't even know this. That our only lifeline to the world was that phone in the kitchen with a twenty five foot cord on it, <laughs> and you can and that was it. I would go whole summers and not see anybody from my class because yeah. I lived in a rural area. Yeah. And today that doesn't even register with people. No, not I, with I, Zoom. No, <laughs> no. And I'm not, and I'm not hundred percent sure that's a good thing. So. Yeah. Because that, that allows a lot of influence to come in, and I think that's what, what the person who asked the question, I think that was their, their concern is, how do I overcome all this other influence? And I think at the end of the day, the thing you've got to remember is that you're, you're, the people under your care, whether you be a pastor of a church or you have children that you're raising, the people in your care will never go further than you go in your devotion to Christ. Right. And that they, so if you're only taking two steps in, they're going to take a step and a half. But if you're all the way in, they may get three quarters of the way in, but that's better than two steps from before. Yeah. They're, they're not going to pass you up in, in their level of commitment. Mm -hmm. so. And I think um, parents need to realize, too, that there may be a moment in their life where the, where the child steps back yes. from their faith. Right. They mm -hmm. may not, but, yeah. but continuing to pray, continuing mm -hmm. to um, be that example and not... Um, have heated discussions because they're not going to church, yeah. you know, but mm -hmm. to have that loving. Talking that with loving, and not yeah, at. Exactly, yes. Yes. exactly. And you know, it was about exactly. that much difference between the two, mm -hmm. between mm -hmm. talking mm -hmm. with and talking at. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah, yeah, mm -hmm. that's key. That yeah. is key. Yeah, and, and one of the things that we want to measure that by is we want to look at other people and, and measure them by our own faithfulness. But if a new Christian who's only been a Christian for a short time or as a young person, if they're able to get to your level of Christianity as a person in their 40s like me, that's not good on me. They shouldn't be able to catch me that quick. Uh, so, so to be able to, to, to measure in that way is tough. We've got to allow them to be where they are and grow into that because that's what we did. Because okay. that's what God lets us do. Absolutely. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> All right, sounds good. Listen, we're going to take a quick break, and when we come back, I'd like to deal with another very important question here from a person who says that, you know, what, what do I do when I'm working so hard all week and I need some weekend rest and I, I, I just don't have the strength to make it to church on Sunday? I need rest. What do you counsel that person to do in that regard? We'll deal with that and more with this great panel as soon as we return. Stay with us. Don't go away. There's still a lot more discussion to come on this episode of Life Questions. But first, do you have a question for a future show? Email it to lifequestions at WTLW.com or call us 419-339-4444. You can also suggest pastors you feel would be a good fit for our panel. Again, send your question ideas and pastor suggestions to lifequestions at WTLW.com. Now back to the discussion. All right, we're back. Thank you for staying with us. And uh, one of our uh, viewers have writ has written this question. I work a lot of hours during the week and am so tired on the weekends. Can I attend church by watching online? I know we're told to be in Christian community, but I really need a break and a, and a chance to not have to rush on Sunday mornings. Does that sound okay to you? Watch it online. And in some cases, some people say they're not, they'd rather not go at all on Sunday morning. Be because they're just too tired. I think when that happens that they're missing the whole concept of the community, the, the believer's community. Uh, first of all, I want to address this when I work a full-time job myself and then pastor as well. So I understand uh, fatigue. This last Sunday, I'd worked 55 hours at my job oh, wow. last week. And this last Sunday, I was exhausted. And, uh, but yet, they don't understand what real rest is either. You know, yeah, we can sit and have our feet up and, and things like that and relax, but real rest is enjoying our relationship with God. And you just can't do that to the full watching online. You know, I, I find that people tend to be a little more uh, critical 
when they're watching online. Well, you know, Pastor, you stepped out of the you stepped out of the the the, the view yeah. at one point. And the it, sound is off. Yeah, yeah, and you know, and, and you're right. The, and online is never going to be the same as participating in the community of yeah. church. Yeah. And so I get uh, being tired. I understand that, but the, it's just a real misunderstanding of what real rest is, and mm -hmm. real rest is in the Lord. And I find it to be the, the kind of heart we have towards church is what mm -hmm. actually is the problem here. You know, yeah. if, if church is viewed as a chore, mm -hmm. well, then we have a lot more underlying issues than just I'm tired and all those things. Because, mm -hmm. you know, I, I, even from being a young kid, I remember waking my parents up because I was so excited to go to church. Mm -hmm. And they're like, oh, let's take this Sunday off. And I would walk down and all those things because I live a block away from Wayne Street, mm -hmm. my home church and everything. But our, we shouldn't have a view of church as, oh, it's a chore, it's a routine or anything. It is a a great blessing that we can come together as a body of believers and, and share our thoughts and hear the singing of the hymns and the reading of scripture and a message given to us that revitalize me. That's how I always see it for, through, for the rest of the week that comes up. It is kind of like, that's where I actually find my rest is when I actually go to church and I can have that communion with the body of believers. And, and is it separate? You know, mm -hmm. is, is our work life one thing, our social life one thing, our church life one thing? Are they all separate or are we encompassing mm -hmm. everything together? Yeah, and, and if, our, if our, our life turns into a giant checklist and I'm like, all right, well, this one here is not getting checked this week. You know, the church, the church check isn't going to happen. I, I, feel, I feel like we reduce uh, the work of worship down to just another, like you said, another task on the list or another chore. And uh, I, I, I think that the, what they're missing is is like you said, the, the, the nature of rest, I think you're 100% correct. Mm -hmm. The nature of rest is not sitting at home on the couch with your socks on. The nature of rest is to be replenished. And, and you can't do that eating junk food and watching something on Netflix. That's not gonna happen. Mm -hmm. You've got to encounter something greater than yourself. And there is no opportunity to do that better than worship. Do, do you find that sometimes people make church and uh, Christianity and add on to their life mm -hmm. to try to embellish the life rather than mm -hmm. making yeah. it the life yeah. itself. It, it gets what's left. That's yeah. what, and, and if I would talk to somebody or when I have talked to someone who, um, who because I, I do want, I have great compassion for a woman who works and a man who works 40 hours a week and then perhaps they're a coach and then they have three children and they're involved in everything and mm -hmm. you see how that how busy that week gets and and um but what i what i talk to them about is how can we change things during the week mm -hmm. because on sunday exactly you should it. not feel so overwhelmed that you cannot even get out of bed before nine o'clock in the morning mm -hmm. i mean you just shouldn't feel that overwhelmed and so what can we do what can, what's going on in your schedule during the week that we can change that up a mm -hmm. little bit mm -hmm. and and i feel that they're missing it's the Holy Spirit, the movement of the Holy Spirit. That's mm -hmm. what they're, they're missing. Mm -hmm. You can't get that at home. But I've also told people, you know what? If every once in a while you stay home and you feel like you regroup that way, then that's what you have to do. But you find that once you give them that okay, those are the ones who show up every Sunday. You know, because they're like, I don't, yeah, ha I don't I tried have it, it didn't to, work. Yeah. you know, yeah, yeah. 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 I, I have just a couple of them, probably not, a, you know, but I, but I have had that happen where mm -hmm. I've, I've kind of given them the, well, if that's, if that is the only way that you feel you're going to get caught up, but I also liken it to exercise. <laughs> It feels, you don't want to do it, but when you, after you do it, you feel really good. Uh -huh. That's how me. church is. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> conviction for everybody. And I think though that, that people, to go right along with what you said, I think the people miss the point of worship. The worship is not about understanding the sermon. Yes, that's important, of course, mm -hmm. but that's not it. You know, I, you know, if that's all it was, I could just email a copy of my sermon out to everybody and we could sell off the building. We don't need it anymore. If that's all it was, something sacred happens there and you miss that online. That doesn't yeah. translate over the internet. Mm -hmm. Now, look, if you're out of town or you're sick or something, of course, we, we are, all of our churches offer that. But, but I, I, I think that to, to do that to, because I'm, I'm so overwhelmed and I'm so snowed under that I just physically can't make it something in your life is out of whack mm -hmm. at that point. Exactly. And, and, and you're trying to replenish it by being lazy 
rather than engaging in something meaningful and replenishing, which is what worship is. Mm -hmm. So, mm -hmm. okay, yep. all right. Here, this this is a question that uh, you really like. Um, you are all associated with churches in St. Mary's. <laughs> we knew this one was coming. Yeah. <laughs> so, how do we know which one of your churches I should attend? You all get along, but don't each of you want to have the largest church? <laughs> <laughs> no, no, no. I was going to say, no, I do not have yeah. that desire. Yeah. Uh, you know, I, I, I think, uh, again, I think we've misrepresented what church really is. Mm -hmm. You know, you talked a minute ago about what worship really is. You know, this was something that I really, I, I've always believed, but I really learned uh, several years ago when I visited Tanzania. And mm. they were placing churches literally next door to each other. Uh, of course, you know that. <laughs> yeah, really? uh, but they, they were placing churches next door uh, to each other because they understood the concept that it's not a competition. Mm -hmm. You know, I don't see any of these pastors as my competition. Nope. They're my brothers and sisters mm -hmm. in winning people for Christ. Mm -hmm. And when you really start thinking about that and doing the math, now, St. Mary's is a smaller community and we have several churches, but one day I did the math and if you take the, the number of people that live in St. Mary's <clears throat> minus the number of people that attend church on Sunday morning and divide that out by each church that's in St. Mary's, each one of our churches, is, if everyone in the community was going to church, would be about 500 strong. Now for me, that would be five services yeah. <laughs> on Sunday, you know, and there is, there is plenty of people that need to hear the gospel without seeing it as a competition. Yes. And that's how I feel about this. That's how I've always felt about it. But that's what they really were doing in Tanzania that I was really impressed with because mm -hmm. they understood that. They understood that I don't have to steal from Tim's church yeah. we're not building, to make my church right, grow. We're not building a church. We're building yeah. the kingdom. Exactly. That's a different thing. And they yeah. got that. And we don't mm -hmm. get that here in the mm -hmm. United States. And what was the occasion of your being in Tanzania? We were doing, we were doing ministry. We were actually trying to learn how they were doing ministry ah. in the Assemblies of God uh, so we could uh, uh, take stuff that they were doing and, and try to apply it to our district. Mm -hmm. uh, here in Ohio, and so that's so we were we were actually ministering to the ministers at that mm -hmm. time, and being ministered by their ministers. Yeah, because that's, they that's more accurate. Yeah, mm -hmm. uh, because they they understood that concept. Would, and as an upstart minister, yeah. minister, do you, uh, you, are you gleaning yeah. from this? Yeah. The the input that I you know I can say is um, our our community and our you know the St. Mary's Ministerial Association where our pastors come together. You, none of us view each other as a competitor. I don't mm -hmm. think so. I mean, I um I can give several examples. Pastor. Bev here just moved into a new building and I helped her church move. Mm -hmm. yeah. And in Rick, when I just started in ministry, he gave me a, a file full of a bunch of music and song downloads and I still work for Wayne Street. Yeah. <laughs> so, I mean, me myself, I mean, away, he tried. Yeah, I mean, so I, I don't, I don't view it as I need to, I'm like, oh, I hope Bev's church's truckload gets on the highway or anything, you know? I was hoping to move it into their building because it's not a matter of right. I want, I need to have the largest church because I think we all also offer very unique ways mm -hmm. and formats mm -hmm. of worship. Right. Yeah. You know, at my mm -hmm. church, we're singing hymns. I know at Wayne Street, they offer two services and one in a band. And Rick's mm -hmm. style of preaching is different from my style of preaching mm -hmm. and Bev. And we all have our own input that may appeal to different people in our community. And that's why we're all there. You know, yeah. I think it doesn't matter if you find Walnut Grove or Living Hope or Wayne Street or Grace Church to be your home. I'm just glad mm -hmm. that they're getting that message in whichever way mm -hmm. is more comfortable for them. Right. Yeah, on Sunday, yeah, on Sunday mornings when I'm, I'm doing my prayer and getting ready to come down, I pray for all the churches in yeah. St. Mary's, not, yeah. not just Wayne Street. Mm -hmm. And I'll tell you, I had a very, a very unique experience with this exact thing last Sunday morning. I, I went over to, to Parker's Church at Walnut Grove between our services so I could bless communion elements for him for a story that we're not going to get into here. But, uh, <laughs> but we, we did that. I did that, and I was sitting there, and I, I went up and bless, I walked in the back door and walked directly up to the front and blessed the communion elements. And then I sat in the front row, and I sat there until I was almost late getting back to my service because I did not want to leave. <laughs> I, I wanted to be there, you know, because there was music going on, and Parker was about to preach, and I actually wanted to stay for that, but I know sure. I got to get back to mine. But, but it was just, it, it was that moment of, yeah, Wayne Street's, there's somebody over there dancing on one leg waiting for me to get back, I know. But uh, I, I didn't want to leave because I was, I, was, I was feeling connected to what was happening. And, and, I, and you know, I'm the pastor of a different church. Mm -hmm. and, and we still did that. And I, I, think that's a, mm -hmm. I think that's a powerful thing that was a, 
you know, an eye-opening moment to me to say, look, I, you know, I'd love for Wayne Street to have a thousand people there, but I'd love for all your churches to have that as well. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. it's, um, it'd be awesome. And, and I think we're called in different areas too, just like um, some churches are called to be, some people love that small intimacy in the church. Mm -hmm. I want to know everybody who's here. And there's mm -hmm. other that, others that want to go in yep. and they're happy having a small group and having, you know, that, mm -hmm. that camaraderie there. And so if there's people out there who need a small church or a large church or a mega church, then there's going to needs to be pastors that are going to suit those mm -hmm. needs sure. too. Mm -hmm. You know, I my home church is Wayne Street and I pastored Walnut Grove before Parker did. And so Rick's just a buddy. I'm just so, a buddy. Yeah. I'm, just, I'm, so, I'm the transplant. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So there is no, there was no, and, and we just moved to Billy and it wasn't like, oh good, I hope we get people from those other. Yeah. No, they they have their church. They're happy with their church. And these are good pastors that, that bring the gospel. Why would you possibly want to take, I want people who haven't been in church. And mm -hmm. I think that's. Mm -hmm. the whole that's the whole point sure, of it sure, I mean right. yeah. Right. yeah and that answers that other part of that question um, how uh, how how do we know which one of your churches to attend attend them all yeah. <laughs> no yeah. but you know it, it's, just, for you. it's the same it's the same way you choose any church any community you know is it a gospel preaching church mm -hmm. are they doing their best to worship God you know those are the keys to picking a church. Mm -hmm. And I, probably this is the wrong question for this group of pastors because we do get along. <laughs> yes, very well. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And we do, uh -huh. we do view things similarly and uh, that's probably why we do get along. But um, I, I just think, you know, again, picking the church isn't as important as understanding why you're picking the church. Very good. Very it's good. the connection that happens there that makes yeah. all the difference. Yeah. Yep, yep. And then, well, I guess we've got about a minute left. Uh, a question I guess I could ask you is that uh, do you, well, I'm told we can go ahead and wrap it up. All right, we'll just wrap up and, uh, you know, we're going to wrap it up. But I just want to remind you that uh, this panel will be back again next Sunday for the next program as well. I think it's going great here. We're just going to continue <laughs> this. And we've got a lot more questions here that we haven't even addressed. And so we'll be back again next week at this same time. Make sure you mark it on your calendar, whatever you got to do to remember this next Sunday, next Monday, whatever the date is, to tune, us, tune in again, okay? Until then, I'm Bill Harris with this illustrious pastoral group here. <laughs> Thank you for being with us. We'll see you next week. Bye-bye. You've been watching TV44's newest locally produced program, Life Questions. Now we'd like your feedback. What did you enjoy about this show and what would you like to see more? Perhaps you have your own questions you'd like us to pose to our panel of pastors in a future show. Submit your questions now by email to lifequestions at wtlw.com or call us with your thoughts. We're able to discuss relevant topics with local pastors right here in the TV44 studio thanks to your financial support. Now is an excellent time to make a one-time gift to TV44 or consider becoming a monthly donor. 100% of your donation stays right here at TV44 and is used to spread the family-friendly, life-changing message of Jesus Christ. Secure donations can be made online at WTLW.com, by phone, by mail, or in person. Again, share your questions for consideration for future shows or just contact us with your comments at lifequestions at WTLW.com.